Hi team, very good morning. Welcome to another session of our knowledge sharing. Today I'll be talking about immunotherapy and its markers and how immunotherapy is revolutionizing the cancer treatment in this present world. So before proceeding, we just understand what immunotherapy is. So immunotherapy as a name suggests, which utilizes our body's own immune system to fight off different diseases that includes cancer also. It's a kind of biological thing. You are just enhancing the immune system which you already have to treat the or to uh, kill the cancer cells. So there are two types of immunotherapy mainly. One is non-specific and other is specific immunotherapy. Non-specific is interference, interleukins and specific immunotherapy the drugs that has been invented or designed are pembrolizumab, nivolumab, all this. So there are mainly three kinds of immunotherapy markers that has been approved for the cancer treatment. First one is tumor mutation burden or TMB. Next is microsatellite instability or MSI. And next one is the last one is the Pogram's death ligand or PDL1. So what is TMB? I'll be talking about these three different biomarkers in a separate way. So first is TMB and its significance in can cancer treatment. So what is TMB? Tumor mutation burden because our normal cell only gets genetically altered and give rise to cancer due to some exogenous or endogenous influences. So TMB is defined as a total number of somatic mutations per coding area of tumor genome and it's considered to be an emerging clinical biomarker that considered to be the immunotherapy that, or that is associated with immunotherapy. So what it means actually, what is this biomarker is doing actually? So what is happening when there's a genetic alteration is happening and when the normal cell is getting changed into a cancerous cell, the TMB, in a cancerous cell, the TMB load is quite high. It means that mutation is quite high in that particular cancer genome. It means that in the, the TMB is happening in the coding area. So definitely a different kind of uh, antigens or the protein will get expressed in the cancerous cell, which is quite different from the normal cells, which in turn gives a signal to our uh, immune system or the T cell that, yeah, I am a normal, I'm, I'm, I'm an uh, abnormal cell. So what happens? <clears throat> the T cell goes there and find that this is a not a normal cell and start to neutralize it. So this is how TMB is responsible and uh, uh, giving the significance or you can say uh, showing its significance in cancer treatments. So another concept is for Im another immunotherapy marker is microsatellite instability. So we humans have a stretch of DNA in our genome, which is also known as homopolymer region. And it is very much prone to uh, mutations because if there's stretch of the uh, bases or nucleotides like CA, 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 so definitely a machine or any kind of method that is to detect that but uh, single thing, single nucleotides, in that particular region will may make some error while doing the exact evaluation. Okay. The same thing is happening in our genome. Okay. So what is MS? It's a repetitive DNA sequences, which is usually one to six base pair in length. And it has been repeated five to 50 times in our genome. It's very much prone to mutations during the replication process or the copying process. So this MS is very much conserved in humans. So they have a specific length and specific repeated repeat numbers. Okay. So if any means this in, if the number is increased or decreased or the length is increased or decreased, it gives rise to microsatellite instability. Of course, this microsatellite instability can be repaired by our own uh, MMR proteins, that is mutation uh, repair proteins or mismatch repair proteins. Okay. 
So if this mismatch repair proteins or the mismatch repair genes are mutated, what will happen? It will not code that for that particular protein types, which will go and you know identify if there is any MSI present in that particular genome. It will only be able to repair that error, right? So that error will get accumulated over time. And which and the, that accumulated error is not at all healthy for a normal cells. It's a it is considered to be a lethal, lethal in the sense that cells may get transformed near cancer cells. So for this ex, for an example, if you can see the CA CA CA, it has been it's a two base pair repeats, a two base pair in length, and repeated six times. Okay. So what is happening in the MSI? So in the MSI, if you can see the last, uh, the below diagram. So what is MSI? When there is a DMMR, deficient mismatch repair proteins, what is happening? Instead of six and two base, uh, six repeats, uh, six times repetition and two base pair length, it has been increased to seven. So the repeated times is seven. Okay. So this, when there is a DMMR, this thing is not getting repaired. It's getting accumulated in our genome and which in turn give rise to some kind of specific tumors or cancers. So just understand what is MMR and MSI. I just made one uh, comparison. So MMR, the name is a protein. Definitely you cannot detect by uh, other traditional method like PCR or NGS because those techniques does not detect uh, protein level in uh, detect proteins. So they are genome based. Uh, they just give you the genome based information. So the the genes that code for MMR proteins are MLH1, MSH2, MSH6, PMS2. So if you want to detect these genes, then you can go for PCR or whole exome based uh, sequencing. Okay. Mutations in MMR means MSI or the MMR proteins that is deficient in repairing can be, you know, like inherited or sporadic. Inherited means it can be germline. Okay. It can be inherited from generation to generation or it can be sporadic or means that it can get accumulated in your course of your life. Okay, so next is PDL1. So PDL1 is a protein that is code for that code for uh, code encoded by CD274 gene. It's a transmembrane protein, and it has been found that it plays a major role in suppressing the adaptive arm of immune system during particular events such as pregnancy, tissue allograft, autoimmune diseases, and other states such as hepatitis. Right means that, so it is always switched off in a normal body, okay. So if someone is getting, got pregnant or some tissue has to be, you know, in, in the case of uh, organ transplantation or in case of autoimmune diseases, that time these proteins get expressed. This protein also get expressed when IFN gamma interferon gamma is, is stim, uh, stimulates the PDL1 expression in T cells, NK cells, macrophages, myeloid disease, B cells, and other kinds of uh, immune cells. This phenomenon is known as adaptive immune mechanism. And this thing is achieved to escape the anti tumor response in the cancer. So now you understand why cancer cells are not get neutralized by our immune system every time because of this mechanism. They are undergoing this adaptive immune, uh, immune mechanism to escape this anti-tumor response from the immune system. So upregulation of PDL1 may allow cancers to evade the host immune system that I explained in the previous uh, line. And it's been documented that high tumor expression of PDL1 was associated with increased tumor aggressiveness and increased risk of death is sometimes uh, around five uh, fold increase death is associated with increase increment of pdl1 so what is 
4 b square is doing to counter this. 4 b square uses different types of platform and antibody clones as per recommended guidelines, that is by FDR and NCCN for PDL1 detection to specified tumor types. So we'll just see what are the uh, platforms and the antibody clones that has been uh, that has been recommended by different guidelines and what 4 base care is using for specific tumor types. Like for an example, the clone 22C3 of DACO for, is used to detect NSCLC, urothelial cancer, GEG adenocarcinoma to start the treatment of Tetruda, that is Pembro. Same thing for SP2263, it's a Ventana uh, clone that this clone has been used in Ventana by Roche. And the drug for which this uh, uh, IISC for PDL1 is done is Nivolumab, and it's done for non or recommended for NSCLC. And another one, one SP142 by Ventana again, Atezo uh, for NSCLC and Atezo for Eurothelial, Atezo plus Ambrexin for TNVCs. So another 22C3 DACO again for all other cancer types has been recommended by different guidelines. And we are also adopted this uh, ISC methods for our customers to give a foolproof uh, guideline recommended results for their cancer types. So how this PDL1 works? So if you can see this, uh, diagram or this flow chart that the PDL1 is present in tumor cells. What is happening here? When an immune cell stem or immune cells come in the in a contact with the uh, tumor cell, the PDL1 expresses a kind of identity card or a proof to show that I am a normal cell. Please don't attack and kill me. So when the tumors or the T cells find that okay, this is a they are showing kind of ID, ID proof of a normal cell, so I must not kill them. So that's how they evade the immune system of our body, cancer cells. But researchers have found that this can be a part of our uh, target therapy, okay, or the targeted uh, therapy for activating the immune response against a cancer cell to neutralize the cancer cells. So they, def they made uh, PDL1 inhibitors, inhibitors or PD1 PD1 inhibitors to uh, to, uh, to you know to activate the immune systems to recognize and discriminate between cancer cells and normal cells. So what will happen if any anti PDL1 or anti PDL1 drugs are given to a particular cancer type? The drug will go and bind to anti PDL1 PDL1 site or PD1 site. Eventually, what will happen? The cancer cell ID proof won't get recognized by the T cells. Now the T cells will feel okay. This is a cancer cell. This is not a normal cell. I must neutralize. It's a foreign material. Now they start to neutralize it. But sometimes there are some problems uh, is faced uh, by different kinds of clinicians when treating with immunotherapy. Suppose a person is having autoimmune disease. In that case, you have to be very critical or crucial in deciding immunotherapy for that particular patient. So this is a uh, uh, mechanism action. Action I have uh, uh, I have downloaded a video that you, you can find that how immunotherapy works. So enjoy watching this. So if you watch this, your concept will get clear that how immunotherapy is working against our cancers. Immunotherapy is an exciting area of cancer research that is changing the way we think about cancer treatment. Immunotherapy works by using the body's immune system to fight cancer. The immune system is a complex network of organs, tissues, and cells, and the substances they make. One of the purposes of the immune system is to rid the body of germs, such as bacteria, and abnormal cells, such as cancer cells. Immunotherapy 
uses different ways to boost the immune system to do a better job of killing cancer cells. This video describes three types of immunotherapy that are used to treat cancer. Non-specific immune stimulation, T-cell transfer therapy, and immune checkpoint inhibitors. Non-specific immune stimulation is a type of immunotherapy that stimulates a patient's immune response in a general way. In nonspecific immune stimulation, drugs or other substances are used to increase the overall immune response, which can help kill cancer cells. For example, some patients who have had surgery to remove bladder cancer may also be treated with a substance called BCG. When BCG is put into the bladder, it can cause a nonspecific immune response that kills cancer cells that remain in the bladder after surgery. This may keep the cancer from getting worse or coming back. T-cell transfer therapy is another type of immunotherapy. T-cells are a type of immune cell and are powerful weapons the immune system uses to fight cancer. For T-cell transfer therapy, T-cells are taken from a patient and changed in the laboratory to make them better able to target the patient's cancer cells and kill them. Millions of copies of these specially changed T-cells are then grown in the laboratory and given back to the patient to fight the cancer. Immune checkpoint inhibitors are a third type of immunotherapy. Immune checkpoints on cell surfaces help control an immune response. Usually immune checkpoints keep T-cells inactive, that is in an off state, until they're needed. This keeps the T-cells from harming normal cells. Cancer cells can take advantage of these checkpoints to switch T cells off. This keeps the cancer cells from being killed. Immune checkpoint inhibitors are drugs that block the checkpoints. This frees the T cells to attack the cancer. These three types of immunotherapy are effective ways to treat cancer, but they don't work for every patient and can cause serious side effects. Researchers supported by the National Cancer Institute are working to learn more about how the immune system works to fight cancer. By studying this, researchers can learn how to improve immunotherapy for all patients. U.S. Department. So that's it from my end. Hope you have uh, understood what I wanted to convey in the slides and with the video. If you have any questions, you are always welcome to ask me any questions uh, till then uh, thank you and uh, have a good day